state birth certificate. Now, a lot of people, when they're trying to um, to find the remedy, to find where things have gone wrong in the government, a lot of people are looking into the acts or looking into the past or looking. They're looking elsewhere. Um, the law books, the history of, of uh, how our government got got there, which is very important, mind you. But where a lot of people are going wrong, and, I, and I'd say most of the people that um, that are looking for this answer, the answer is within ourselves, because we simply we don't really know who we are, or. Um, our own standing. Um, a very clever man said to me, very uh, savvy in the law, said to me, it's too late to uh, say I don't consent when you're standing in the court. And, and this is true too. Because if you're in the court, then something's gone wrong. You've become their property or subject to their rules, their laws, and the governments that we have today, especially after um, 1973 when, when Gough Whitlam signed the Unidroid Treaty of Rome, which handed the administration of Australia over to a foreign United Nations um, entity under the control, basically, of the Vatican. And the Vatican have been sort of um, doing this for at least, at least the last 2,000 years, but it probably goes back further than that. The Vatican has always had its control over um, the world. And that's because the, the Vatican um, owns the copyright on the type of system that they, um, that they control the people with. And the people are being controlled with or by a um, just a military system, a standard military um, water law system. The reason why the water, the laws of water are controlling us men and women that are on the land is because they needed to bring in a different controlling system for people other than the controlling system of land because the common law of land is it's a freedom it's it's we are we control ourselves on land so what they had to do is they created a jurisdiction of the sea a, a controlling system of the sea and what they had to do was um, invite us to join them on their ship or on their fiction corporate ship um, in order to become under the control of their system because their system cannot control men and women they don't have jurisdiction with that so rather than them rather than them coming onto the land and controlling us what they've done is parked their ships their corporations their foreign entities on our land like as in ships in dry dock and then they invite us onto their ship or into their corporations and then once we enter into their corporation under their tokens they give us they give us a name to enter into their jurisdiction into their ships and once they achieve that or once they uh, they grant you a name and you accept that name then that name is their property and you've attached yourself to their name and that's how they start to control us in such a way because we have become a part or a crew member on their corporate ships and that's what birth certificates are all about it is a certificate of you birthing onto one of their ships <laughs> birth certificate and the date of birth is the date when a person they say is born 
but a person doesn't exist until it becomes an incorporation. So persons are incorporations. It means that a person is a man joined to something. So that's when the incorporation happens. The minute you become incorporated with something, or join a ship, or join a foreign entity, then you legally become the person. And persons are controlled by the Vatican, <laughs> which is because the Vatican controls all of the incorporated or you could say all the corruptions in the world because you know our given Christian name is one name even though there may be two or three words that make up the one name it is one name and that one name does not have the family name attached to it so what the Vatican must do or the ships that park their ships, their shipping corporations, foreign shipping corporations on our land, is that they must get you to join their ship and give you a name that uh, belongs to the ship so you can attach yourself to it. Now they know that no man in his right mind would go and attach himself to some foreign ship and wind up being deemed lost at sea. Uh, and never likely to return and while you do that then whoever offered you the legal titles to put you onto the ship have a right to your equity if you don't come back so that's all they do they just wait for you not to return and the, the reason why you don't return back onto the land is because the name that they gave you is a name that you thought and assumed and believed was your name They gave you a name that belonged to them, that you assumed belonged to you. <laughs> and then this bloke comes along called Christ, and he tells you, he warns you. He said, in my name you shall be saved. But if you accept the company name, the corporate name, then you are with them. And I think it's quite stated in many parts of the Bible that uh, if, if you are not with me, you are against me. So if you worship or accept the foreign name of the ship that's dry docked onto your land, then you are not with Christ. So therefore, Christ cannot save you. But even though you believe that your name is your name, when you think about it, when you think about it, and when you read this shipping document carefully, that's all it takes. You just got to read it and have a look. Because John Henry Doe is only John Henry. He has one Christian name. And John Henry, the two words, make up the one Christian name. But what the state has given John Henry is a name with the incorporated family name attached to the John Henry and called it John Henry Doe. And the minute you believe that your name is John Henry Doe, then you have attached the, the name of the shipping, foreign shipping corporation that is under the control of the Vatican, which is the control of the sea. You've attached your body to their name and you have abandoned Christ's name so therefore you step from the creditor which is the Christian into the debtor the Christian name is John Henry when you claim the John Henry Doe name written in proper English um, as capitalized uh, common law English once you accept the John Henry Doe you are deemed by Christ to serve another deity. You are worshipping the gods of the sea. We are worshipping the gods of the Vatican, which are not the gods of Moses. And certainly not the God of Christ. Because Christ said, in my name you shall be saved. So the Christian name of John Henry Doe, 
is John Henry. On his certificate, birthing certificates, his Christian name is John Henry. The only person that has surnames on these documents is your parents because they have already assumed the surname by the time they created the certificate for you. But they certainly make sure that when you're born, you are correct, which is just John Henry. And then what happens is, as you are indoctrinated, by the, turn you, by the time you turn 21, the age of majority, you have no idea about what's happening to this banking, private, shipping, foreign document. No idea whatsoever. So the, the remedy of the system is simply knowing who you are. The other thing is, is the date of birth is the date that you birthed your body to the corporation. And in the system, the Christian Judea system that the Vatican runs, it has a debtor and a creditor, or the office of creditor and the office of debtor. And if you attach yourself or birth yourself to the office of the debtors, then you will pay the debts of the Vatican. But when you birth yourself to the office of the creditor, see that's a birth, and if you look at your two birthing certificates, one is the state birth certificate, which is the, the debtor state, but the creditor state, if you find that certificate, the date of birth was one around one month for a few weeks after you were born. The word born does not mean birth. The word born means born into life or existence. And sometimes the word life really means the duration of a contract. So if you birth yourself into the ship or the office of the debtors, then I think they call that the pagans, the pagan trust, the pagans of the debtors which are pagans, pagan. And the life span of a pagan is three score years and ten. So the lifespan of the pagan is 70 years. And if you enter in from um, when you turn 21 and you remain in the office of the debtors holding the surname or the surety name, which is really John Henry Doe, that's the surety name because it's incorporated if you, if you remain holding that name, then you will be deemed as the debtor, the one that pays the debts. And when you're a debtor or a crew member on a ship, you don't have rights, you have a privilege, but you also have statutes. And if you follow the rules of the ship, then you will have liberty to go on shore. But if you break the rules of the ship, you may lose your liberty and wind up in the hold which is the cell, and you will not have freedom. But it's not freedom. Liberty and freedom are not the same thing. But if you want your freedom back, to not be on the ship and not be a part of the debtors of the ship, if you want to travel on that ship, being looked after as the creditor, where the crew members look after you, and you simply enjoy the ship. And the skipper, uh, is just happy to have you on board. Whereas the crew, the skipper, who is the magistrate, he makes sure the crew does what they're told. The difference is your standing. That's the remedy. The difference is your name, the Christian name or the pagan name. Not the old uppercase name. I'm talking about a name written in proper English. John Henry is the creditor name. John Henry Doe is the debtor name. The thing is, if you assume yourself to be John Henry Doe, then you're holding the property of the Registrar General of your certificate of birth. Now, if you have a look at a certificate of birth, in the margin, on the right hand side of the margin, 
it says in black and white and signed by the Registrar General, who in Queensland is at the moment, 2018, is uh, David John. He has signed that, stating that John Henry Doe is in his custody. So he has the ability to allow John Henry to have liberty to go ashore or to remain in the hold. But John Henry Doe is the slave servant of the Registrar General. So think about your name, think about who you are, have a look at your driver licences, your passports, and all the state paraphernalia that you think your name is on. And because you've claimed all of those instruments, then they, the state, have a right to assume that you are on their ship. And as I said, the ships are the law of the water. The law of the water is controlled by the Vatican. The Vatican controls all incorporations and an incorporation is a corruption of Christ's name. Anything incorporated that's joined is a corruption. Whereas you, the given name, is one name and it is not corrupt, it is pure. So therefore, the serpents, the usurpers of the sea, the Vatican and its foreign military, such as the United States Securities Exchange Commissions, uh, the United Nations, anything united is subject to the law of the Vatican. The corpus juris, the laws of the dead. And when you are incorporated and joined to another foreign entity, then you are assumed dead, lost at sea. That's why they call it the corpus juris. So while you are dead, but you haven't got a, a death certificate, you must be in some form of purgatory. So all of the controlling of these souls, these dead souls, uh, is done by the chambers of the Vatican. If you look inside the Vatican, as you walk in to the Vatican, the, the text written on the outside of the Vatican is proper ancient Latin. It has the hyphens or the marks between the signs. But when you walk into the Vatican, in the cross, which means dead, the chambers of the death of the dead, if you look up the ceiling of the Vatican around the edges they use debased dog Latin which is the, the Latin text the all uppercase text that has no marks between the signs which is Babylonian it means absolutely nothing but while you assume that while you are assumed to be dead lost at sea then you are inside the chambers of the Vatican chamber is a tomb you've been entombed you're in the dead and that text that's inside the Vatican is the same text that's written on these documents it's the same text that's written on your power bills your rates notices your driver licenses that is the language the jurisdiction of the incorporated dead souls and how are you what it where is your standing what are you are you the free, the living? Are you pure? Do you hold Christ's name? Or are you incorporated and attached to the serpent of the sea? Remember Adam and Eve, that snake, the serpent, that came and tricked Eve into eating the fruit of the tree of the debtor, the tree of knowledge, becoming a usufruct of the tree of, of the foreign military. Well, that's the deception. And the snake is the serpent, which is the foreign militaries that come in the Vatican. Not only did God in the, Adam, in the Garden of Eden warn Adam and Eve about that, Christ also warned you.
about it. So all of the warnings, not only from the Bible are there, but in the very, um, the, the Latin dictionaries and the very English dictionary, the meaning of the words, if you look closely enough to the meanings of the words, and if you learn how to read sign, you'll see the difference between sign and English. There can be no legal jurisdiction between two separate languages. So when you have dog Latin or debased Latin and English written on the one document, if you assume that to be one, then that is an incorporation. But if you are grammatically savvy, if you know what you're looking for and you know what you can see, then you will see that the all uppercase text, which is the Babylonian text, and the written English, when it's separated, the document reads nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. It becomes the presumption of law. When you raise these matters with magistrates, they don't like it. But at some point, the magistrate may work out that you know the dirty trick. But what they can do, the magistrates, is all they have to do is make sure that you are holding some form of attachment to the underworld. The minute they can find an attachment, some sort of a, a document with um, a license or identification that identifies you as a part of their underworld uh, water law system, the, the, the usurping corporate ship that sits on in dry dock on our lands. If you're attached to that ship, it doesn't matter what you say or do or think. The magistrate is going to salvage you and take your equity and administer your birthright, your true dominion, your ownership of the mineral and energy wealth of the, the land, the nation that you were born on. But when he can see that you know, <laughs> he'll be heading for the door because he is the actual debtor. He is the debtor, he's the first debtor. And we did not force him to join the, um, to act as the magistrates. He applied for that job. I didn't force anyone to stand up there and act as the debtor. He has the tricks and the knowledge how to confer the debt back onto the creditor, to con convert the creditor into the debtor. He has this ability, his, this knowledge, this sorcery, these tricks. But they are only just illusions, tricks, grammatical knowledge. And when you know that, and when you know their dirty tricks, then that's the remedy for the system. You always agree, and it's all offer and acceptance. So if they offer you the ability to act as one of their citizen debtors, then you can accept the offer. Absolutely, yes, I will be a citizen. But what you must do as a remedy is what's it worth to lose your freedoms, your true standing as a man on land, or in that case, you're standing as a creditor on their ship. You've been invited onto the ship originally as a creditor, as a guest. They will look after you on the ship. So you have to you have to weigh that up. Do you want to be a crew member of their ship? So when they offer you a, a standing as a crew member, and think about it. Think about what it's worth. Offer and acceptance. Do you want to be a crew member? Then maybe you should be paid. You see what I'm saying? Then there's no conflict. There's no reason for them to assume that you are a belligerent. There's no reason for war. There's no reason for the military codes, the legal codes. There's no reason for the water law military to affect you because you've already agreed to be a citizen of their foreign corporate ship, the city of London, the bar, a debtor of the bar. That's what you become. So if you want to become a debtor of the bar and be subject to those lying, deceiving, clever magistrates, 
than to think about what it's worth. Because many of you just simply, and I, many of us just simply went along and fell into the, into the standing of the debtors because of our own ignorance and stupidity and us thinking that we knew everything. I know everything. I can run a business. But you knew nothing. Absolutely nothing. And when you learn your grammar, and you learn who you are, and you learn the difference between sign, language, and the English common law language, which is the language of the sea and the language of the land, when you learn the differences between them, and you start to recognize them on their documents, then you have the ability for remedy. You have the ability to accept their um, offer of citizenship. Accept it. Offer and acceptance. But what is the offer to accept to stand as the citizen of their foreign unidroid United Nations corruption? <laughs> the remedy is probably simple, isn't it? You are John Henry, you are not John Henry Doe. If they force you to be John Henry Doe, then they are committing a crime. If they issue you documents through the mail and you don't accept them through the mail because there's something wrong with the writing on the document, then they still don't have any jurisdiction over you. If you crack open the seals of those articles or of those envelopes that, that come, then you have broken the seal into, an, into the world of the dead, the spells. You, you will be attached to the spell that's attached to that document. You, you, you will find this hard going in some cases as a friend of two friends of mine are going through a hard time. Rowan Lorian is still in prison, but they will not show him any of the paperwork because they know he can see the fraud. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're being belligerent and they are committing absolute serious crime by holding that man in prison after he's asked to see what is the charge and can he see the charge documents because he knows there was no offer and acceptance. That's outright slavery. And that's a dangerous thing for the state and I think the Vatican knows that too. So even though the remedy may not come or the rem remedy may come with uh, imprisonment and a good right bashing, <laughs> as I've witnessed all of these things and many threats against myself and my family, but I must admit this has stopped because of that last court case, I think that the magistrate had recognised that I knew a little bit more about it than what the average man and woman knows about it. So he could not um, do his trick, you could say. His illusion could not work. So the remedy is knowing who you are. And when you know who you are and you can see the grammatical deceptions on their paperwork, then you can see that it is nothing at all. The old saying of kicking a dead horse <laughs> is if they keep on pushing it, it's as good as kicking a dead horse. Because in the end, they can't prove that anything exist, existed. Because when they did it, they made sure that nothing existed in case someone worked it out. And when someone works it out, it's then when they go, they'll back off and say, oh, okay, you've worked it out. And of course, it's our own fault because we accepted it. We thought it was something when it was nothing. So it's not their fault. It's our own stupidity and our fault. But once it's pointed out to them and they continue on with it, that's when the real remedy will start. That's when the charges start to come, the damage 
you've been hurt by the state. And, well, we are already rich, we are already wealthy. The poorest man in the street has a birthright. And he's, it's been administered by these usurping uh, serpents, these foreign administrative corporations. It can still remain like that. But rather than you being the debtor of them, so that they can serve you, but if you're not there, then they will keep it themselves. So you must return back from debtor into creditor. And when you pull that off, when you get that, then you'll understand the value of the Vatican, the value of the magistrates, the value of all their courts. You'll start to see that, well, maybe it's a good thing because they're getting all of you to basically work for nothing. But as long as you have a good life inside the, on the corporate ship, and if you're happy there, then turn this off. Uh, but the very fact that if you're, if you're watching this, you are already curious to figure out what's going on.